that go away? Yes. <laughs> All right, there we go. More circle. All right, we need to know how to draw more circle. Yes. We need to know how to draw more circle. More circle is a graphical representation of this principal stress business. And what is this principal stress business? And I'm going to scoot up and just get some space to, uh, to scribble a little bit and remember what it is we're even talking about. If we have some arbitrary stress state, we can have something as complicated as this guy, where you've got some normal stress this away, some normal stress this away, some normal stress this away, and some shear stresses all over the place, and shear stresses here, and <coughs> shear stresses here, and it's this tensor quantity that has three squared things. And we don't like this because I can't draw well enough to deal with this. So we keep things planar. And we say what? We simplify everything in the Z. Say, no, we're not dealing with it. So sigma Z equals zero. And then any of the tau's with Z component. Anything that's poking off the page, we get rid of. And we say, we're going to deal with sigma X. We're going to deal with sigma Y. And we're going to deal with just our nice, simple, flat, tau xy world. It's like when Homer got stuck in 2D. Or no, he went to 3D. Never mind. It's not like that at all. But planar situation. Sigma z is still there. It's just zero. This is called a plane stress situation and this is our arbitrary stress state. This is our arbitrary state of plane stress. All right. That's in whatever coordinate system we have defined. Then last time we went through the effort of doing some geometry and some trigonometry and we figured out how to rotate that through any arbitrary angle. That's our transformation matrix and I say, oh, let's transform the stresses to a new coordinate system, x prime, y prime, and we can do that with that three by three transformation matrix. Why do we do that? We do that because at some point, when I rotate these guys, and I'm gonna do some nice, lovely teal, at some point, we rotate them, and what happens? We get all sigma x, sigma y, and at some point, that tau xy equals zero. That's the point that we're interested in, and that's when our sigma x's and y's magically become sigma a's and b's, and that's your principal stresses. When is it that this principal stresses occur? When the shear stress is zero. That's what a principal stress is. So principal stresses occur when the shear stress is zero. That's what we're looking for. There is some angle and we figured out how to get those values. That's your sigma a and b. So sigma x, sigma y, that's an arbitrary stress state. If I do my transformation and I find principles, that's sigma a, sigma b. Okay. So, mm, 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 mm. sigma A and B are principal stresses. And at the end of yesterday, we, yesterday, at the end of last week, we figured out those formulas that sigma A and B is any XY average plus or minus this kind of cumbersome square root thing.
and we figured out that the angle is half the inverse tangent of that guy over that guy. This is just recapping what we got to. That's the transformation angle you need to make any arbitrary xy into your principles AB. Again, that's just simply reviewing what we've the, the, the point that we've gotten to so far. Now, this German guy, Otto Mohr, can't imagine a German or name than Otto. Otto, <laughs> there is your circle. So, Otto Mohr acknowledged or I guess championed the fact that you can do all this stuff graphically. So all of this ends up jiving so that you do a nice to scale drawing, you can just measure the answers. You don't have to actually do any math. Because this guy looks awfully much like a Pythagorean distance. And we'll come to find out that this guy is actually the anchor center point of the circle. So a circle is defined by a center point and a radius. So we're going to start in with the rules of drawing more circle on one side, and we're going to draw more circle on the other side. Um, so what are the steps? We're going to start with the steps of drawing more circle. One. We need axes. All right, I can do that. So let's go for black with our axes, and let's make some axes. Now, these axes are a little different. This guy is our normal stress axis. Horizontal is normal stress. And this is the one that people will get goofed up on because we have our shear axis is positive downward. There are a couple of different ways that you can do sign conventions for this stuff. And if you go Google on Wikipedia, you'll see at least two of them pretty well explained. The reason we do positive shear down is to keep the rotation angle as positive clock, uh, positive <coughs> this way from the normal stress axis. So either you have to go backwards in angle or you have to put shear down to keep things jiving, but just smile and nod and say plus tau is down. Or go check the, the Wikipedia article on this actually has a pretty good explanation if that just fundamentally bothers you as why down is up. But um, So we need axes. We have axes. So what else do we need? We now need to plot two points. Two, plot two coordinate pairs. So sigma and tau are our axes. And the two points that we're going to plot, one of them is sigma x and plus tau xy. And the second one is sigma y and negative tau xy. All right, so as an example, or I'm going to put my points over here on this side. I'm going to go for red. So we're going to assume we have a positive shear stress value here and a positive tau, and we plot that point. This is sigma x, comma tau xy is the coordinate pair. That's my first point. And then we have another point that is some value sigma y and the negative tau value so a Mohr circle is always balanced up and down vertically on that normal stress axis 
So this guy is sigma y comma minus tau xy. That's my second point. Okay, so far we're doing all right. So this value is sigma x. This value is sigma y. And that value is your shear. All right. So three, the part that I struggle with a fair bit. Connect the dots. Um, the intersection with the sigma axis is the quantity we call sigma average. So I'm going to come over here and cheat and get a line and connect the dots. Uh -oh. Oh. There we go. So I have connected the dots and that crossing point is sigma average. All right. So far, so good. We like cookbooks. Step four, part I struggle with even more, draw a circle. Oh, draw a circle centered at sigma average that passes through our points one and two. And again, I am going to rely on the wonders of technology. And magic. All right. So this guy is now centered on my sigma average. And these two locations where the circle intersects with the normal stress axis are very important part points. Those are my principal stresses because what's the value of the shear stress if I'm on the normal stress axis? It's zero. That's what we were looking for. So those two points are mm -mm -mm -mm. this point is sigma A this point is sigma b. Those are your principal stresses. All right. So now this might. Oh, what? Does it matter which one further angle? Yes. The, the further right one is a. The largest value is a. Is it just a coincidence that? Yes. It ends up at zero. It is a hundred percent coincidence that it happened to be at zero on this particular drawing. Okay. I couldn't do that again <laughs> if I, I did want to. Doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I was like, oh crap, I did it wrong. No. <laughs> what are these values? Sigma A, sigma B, sigma What what the these the, yeah. where the circle crosses this axis, these are the principal stresses. Okay. And what sigma C Back to our drawing, we have sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z is zero. So we rotate in the plane, sigma c is still zero. The third stress, no matter which way I orient myself in x, y, the third stress is still always zero. Sigma c is still zero for plane stress. Okay, now our geometric acumen will allow us, I need a little more space, hmm? Sigma C actually is the origin of the axes. Sigma C is always zero, so sigma C is a point that is not necessarily on the circle. Sigma C just is zero because we've assumed plane stress. 
Okay, so if I look at this triangle right back here, and let's go for green, I have a triangle defined by the distance from the center of the circle to my original sigma x, and this, and that. So that guy's 90 degrees. So this vertical portion of my circle, what's its magnitude? This arm over here. Is that even showing up? Kind of. This guy is tau xy, is how big that is. And then what about this distance? This distance is sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2. That's where that term comes from. How big is this? It's this cut in half. And so therefore, Pythagorean distance, what's the radius of my circle? It's the square root of that guy squared plus that guy squared. Square root of all of that. So the <coughs> So the radius of Moore's circle R is the square root of that difference squared plus the shear xy squared, square root of all of that. All right, that's where the radius is. How geometrically, how do I figure out my number for sigma a? I know this guy, that location is the sum divided by <coughs> 2 plus the radius. So how far is this? Go the radius plus from that point. What's sigma b? That point minus the radius. Okay. So, sigma A equals sigma average plus the radius. Sigma B equals sigma average minus the radius. And what's sigma average? Sigma average is the average. Sigma X plus sigma Y divided by 2. And if you put that in there and that in there, it's the same thing we got at the end of last time. It's just now, at least to me, way easier to remember now that I have a thing to sketch and go, oh yeah, that one's the plus term and that one's the minus term. So the sigma average, add them together and divide by two and to get that distance, subtract them and divide by two. So that's how we, that's how we roll with this circle. Wow. Let's try an example with numbers. Now let's keep my rules over here. Let's keep our rules and let's scroll this one to the example. All right, we have a stress state. We have a stress state that is sigma x 8,000, sigma y minus 3,000, tau xy 6,000. Actually, I'm going to take just a second, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to give myself some more space, insert page, blank page. What does that stress state look like if I wanted to draw it? If I take my little cube of stuff and I want to draw that, what does that stress state look like? My sigma x is tensile or compressive. Okay, so that looks like this, 8,000. Well, how about my sigma y? 
So that looks like this. I guess I should throw one of those out there. So this is 3,000. What's that guy? It's important to remember <laughs> that we're assuming sigma z0, and then we've got this guy is tau xy equals 6,000. Or if I draw him in a planar sense, I have 8, 3, and 6. If you have a stress state that one of the original three stresses is zero, write it explicitly. Like if you have no shear stress or if you have no sigma x or whatever, write it explicitly. The next example will be like that. So, all right, so that's how you draw, that's what the stress state looks like. Now let's come back to our rules. Where is my mouse? Where is my mouse? Come here, mouse. There we go. So back to our rules, back to our example. What's our first step? We need axes. We got this guy is plus sigma, and we got this guy is plus tau. All right, check. What's next? Plot a couple of points. I'm going to yell at Stephanie again. <laughs> <laughs> Except I'm not going to yell. Um, what is the first coordinate pair that I should plot? Mm-hmm. Yep, so what numbers are those for this guy? Yep. Yep. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go 2, 4, 6, 8. And I'm going to go 2, 4, 6. So that's my first point. And I'm going to call him 1. Brogdon. What's my second point? Huh? Uh huh. So, sigma y is, I'm going to call that minus 3. And minus tau xy, so I go up 2, 4, 6. So that guy's about there. So that's point 2. All right, what's the next step? Cheat. All right. What's important? Is this guy right here is sigma average. So you can kind of squint if you've drawn it well on the grid and say, yeah, this could be something about 2,500, 2,200, something like that. All right, what's my next step? Draw a circle. Whee! I like this tool. <laughs> oh. There we go. All right. What else is important? We know that that is a very important point. What are these things called? Principal stresses. Sigma A is the bigger one. Sigma B is the smaller one. And what sigma C? Zero. Sigma C is your origin. Sigma C is zero. All right. So we've, we're done with our instructions. I need more space. Insert. Scratch paper. Oh, come on. All right, so we need some landmarks on this. How do we figure out what sigma average is? Sigma average is sigma x plus sigma y over 2. So 8,000 plus minus 3,000 over 2. So that average is 
2,500. All right, what's the other landmark we need? We need the radius, which is this guy, the difference squared, and the shear squared. That ends up being eighty one thirty nine. Where? Um, the first term under All right. So then Sigma A is sigma average, hmm? <coughs> yes. Because what? Well, it happens that both of them, I mean, both shear and normal stress are PSI, so the units in both directions on these plots are PSI. So sigma A is 2,500 plus 8,139, otherwise known as 10,640. And the plot, sure enough, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, sure, it's a little bit past 10.5. And sigma B is sigma average minus the radius. So 2,500 minus 8,139. So sigma B is minus 5,640. And you look at that and you go, okay, 2, 4, it's a little past 5. I can buy that. Huh? I must have done better on that Okay, so now one other glitchy thing to remember about Moore's circle. We figured out that that transformation angle theta is one half the inverse tangent of actually this dimension over that dimension. This angle right here is actually two theta, not theta because of transferring it onto this plane instead of rotating it in the physical plane. So that angle separation in between here is in fact 2 theta. So an important, um, mm -mm -mm -mm. so 2 theta A is equal to the inverse tangent of that distance, which is 6,000, over this distance, which is the 5,500. And that ends up being 4749. And if you happen to remember or flip back, that ends up with the same theta A is 23 and 3 quarters. So important. Maybe I'll put it in red because important things are red. This is actually 2 theta A. That physical angle on Moore's circle is twice the angle in the transformation matrix. All right. And what's theta C? Zero. Theta C is zero. All right. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So this theta C being zero. So we got there. Okay, this maximum shear stress business. Going to make this bigger. So this is kind of a lot of words on the page, but it's almost saying the same thing that I started with sort of reviewing from last time. If we have an arbitrary stress state, instead of this nice cube that we've got here that has A's and B's, and notice, what does it not have? 
doesn't have any taus, and it doesn't have any sigma c. Why? Because if we have a state of plane stress, there is no third principal stress. It is zero. And if we've rotated things appropriately so that we have sigma a and b, which are what? Uh, principal stresses. They're principal stresses. You have no shear. So if I unrotate this guy, it would look like my other drawing, where I have a sigma x, a sigma y, and a tau xy. I rotate it. I'm at principal stresses. I only have a and b, and c is 0 because of y, because of words that are on that page right there. Because we are in plane stress. Or maybe they are in there, and I just couldn't read fast enough. So, mm -mm 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 -mm. no tau because sigma A and sigma B are principal. Cannot make that point redundant and loudly enough. And plain stress state means sigma C equals zero. All right. And I guess the bottom half of the page is kind of saying that same thing. So third principal stress, sigma sub C is zero. Fine. So I talked about what the bottom half of the page said before we got there. Top of the next page. This is the Mohr circle that we just talked about, where we take a sigma x and a sigma y and we plot them, and the intersection with the sigma axis is our A and B principal stress. Where is sigma C? Sigma C is at the origin. It is zero. And so this is representing what happens if we take any arbitrary rotation about sigma C as an axis. You know, stick a dowel in your material and rotate it about this. These are all the possibilities. If we then, and I'm going to call this guy a green circle, if instead we think about it in terms of rotating about the A axis, what's the sigma C value? Sigma C is still zero. So if we draw a different Mohr circle, sigma C is still zero, and sigma b can still vary to the value that it was before. So sigma b is still out here, and so I get a smaller circle. It can only vary this much. Different circle. If then I think about rotating about the b axis, and I have my Moore circle. Mm. Fine, we'll have pink axes. Sigma C is still zero but I have my sigma A instead, and I'll go with blue for this one. So I have, oh, really? So I have a different circle again. If I put all of those on the same axes, I end up with this thing that we call a 3D Mohr circle, where all of them exist on the same axes, and I've got my blue one, the pink one, and the original one, which is the one that we've drawn all along, this outside one. Okay? So if I want to know what the biggest possible shear value I can have, because shear stress, after all, is what causes things to fail. It's those dislocations. If you remember back from 2070, you learned about crystal slip planes and 
BCC and FCC and all sorts of things like that. It's those vacancies in the crystal lattice and sheer stress allows for things to twist and bend and ultimately it's the sheer stress that gets you. So how do we figure out what the worst possible <coughs> shear stress is? If we rotate out to the principal stresses, we got tau is zero. But alternatively, we can look at what's tau max. Well, it's the radius, isn't it? It's the radius <coughs> if sigma A is positive and sigma B is, zero, is negative. If instead, we had the case where sigma A and B are both positive, and I'm not going to worry swapping colors, but if sigma A and sigma B are both positive, sigma A, sigma B, and what sigma C? It's zero. So then I still have my same three little circles. Boy, I'm circularly challenged. But what's my biggest shear stress this time? It's not sigma A minus sigma B. Which one is it? It's sigma A minus sigma C is for the largest circle. Is that kind of making sense? All right. And divided by 2 for the radius. Or what if? Sigma A and B are both negative. This is, this is to, to find the largest possible <laughs> shear value is the <coughs> radius of the largest possible circle of 3D's Mohr's circle. Of the 3D Mohr's circle. Okay, so what's sigma C? Sigma C is still equal to zero. And sigma A and sigma B. So what's this radius in this case? It is sigma C minus sigma B over 2. This is insane. This is three different cases. This is complicated. It's which one is it? Which circle is it? What's going on? We have a way of simplifying this out of your consciousness, and you never have to think about 3D Moore's circle, at least until you get to another class. Right, radius, radius. So depending on the signs of the two principal stresses, if we have this, we could have three possible calculations we would need to do for the radius, which is the biggest possible shear stress. And we can simplify that. Instead, we take our sigma A, sigma B, and what sigma C? Should be over two. Oh. Wow, that's bad handwriting. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. <coughs> I'm sure glad that handwriting wasn't part of the interview process. <laughs> All right, so we have sigma A equals some number. Sigma B equals some different number, and sigma C equals zero. If we simply re-rake these and rename them sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, and put them in absolute order, we will always be able to do sigma 1 minus sigma 3 will always give us the biggest circle. So if this guy is, say, plus 40, minus 5 and 0, I just re-rank them to be 40, 0, and minus 5, and I'm always going to get shear max. Okay, so sigma ABC are principal stresses, sigma 1, 2, 3 are principal stresses. I've just re-ranked and ordered them. And in the process, I often get sigma Michael Jackson. A, B, C. Easy as one, two, three. Maybe. I kind of doubt it. So we reorder and re-rank so that sigma one is bigger than sigma two is bigger than sigma three. 
and that's how we figure out what the actual shear stress is. Why do we care? Why do we care about this shear max? <coughs> failure criteria. The failure criteria that is the last piece of the puzzle that you need for your combined loading project and for stuff on the final exam is to figure out factors of safety. And the factors of safety all boil around that maximum shear stress. So you got to get tau max to be able to get a factor of safety, and that is the last piece of trivia that you will need to do everything in the class. Good. It's been a lot of stuff. Um, and for better or for worse, you will never look at the world the same. <laughs> all my fault. All right, let's do an example. Insert, hey, get out of there. Page break. All right, so now we have, y'all turn back to your rules. I'm going to come over here, and first, even though this isn't necessarily part of what it's asking for, I'm going to say, draw the stress state. What does this look like? We have sigma x is minus 8,000, sigma y is 0, and tau is minus, no, is just 3,000. So what does this stress state look like? It looks like compressive, 8,000. Oh, I have no sigma y. It is safer to always explicitly write it. Because if you just leave it blank on the test, I don't know if you knew it was zero or not. Mm. And how do I draw that? Do I draw this arrow over here up or down? This guy right here for tau? Like I need to point up or down? Why? This is not because that's Because that's the way it is. Because a plus tau gets an upward arrow on the plus x face. So that's what the shear, mm -mm, that's what the stress state looks like. Now over here we're going to draw more circle and figure out what the principal stresses and the max shear stress are. What's the first thing we need? Axes. axes. Oh, I'm going to cheat and make me some axes too. Mm. Uh oh, I don't have my shift button. Are we doing a rotated axis? Yes. That's sigma x prime, sigma y prime. Yeah, I can't get to the shift button, so that's not going to be very good. Mm. All right, what's the first plot point I need to plot? Let's go to Mr. Ogren. Um, to sigma a, which would be. Who? Yep, yep, yep. Get back to your cheat sheet. All right. Yeah, you're going to plot 40 good points. First one's going to be sigma x and tau x, y. All right. So what does that look like? What numbers do I go to? Um, negative 8,000. The x-axis and then you go down 3,000. Because that's positive. So I'm going to call that point one. All right. What's my second one? Ms. Arnold. Zero and three thousand, so maybe kind of sort of like that. Hey, get out of there. All right. And now I need to connect the dots. Why, what, what, what? Why, what? Sigma y, comma, minus tau x, y. All right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Connect the dots. And this guy, uh-oh, is sigma average. We need a circle. Mm. 
We need an empty circle. That looks funky. Yeah, I guess it is. I hope y'all's looks better than mine. <laughs> Moore's lemon. All right. So how do I get sigma average? I need to do some math. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go for so a lovely burnt orange. Sigma average is what? Minus 8,000 plus 0 over 2. So sigma average is minus 4,000. So this guy theoretically is at minus 4,000. All right. My radius is the square root of sigma x plus sigma y, nope, the difference, squared plus tau squared, and that actually ends up being a handy dandy 3, 4, 5 triangle. So sigma a, which is this point right here, is sigma average plus the radius. Sigma a equals minus 4,000 plus 5,000. Sigma a equals 1,000. Sigma b is sigma average minus the radius. So minus 4,000 minus 5,000. Sigma b equals minus 9,000. And then what do we do with this whole tau max thing? We take sigma a which is 1,000, sigma b, which is minus 9,000, and sigma c is what? Zero. Re-rank and reorder sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3. So sigma 1, the largest one, is still that. Sigma 2 now noses up above the minus 9,000, and sigma 3 is minus 9,000. So tau max is sigma 1 minus sigma 3 over 2 is 1,000 minus minus 9,000 over 2 is, in fact, 5,000, which was the radius. Because sigma A and sigma B were different signs, the largest shear max is the radius. It is probably more common if you have a pressure vessel. Sigma A and sigma B have to be positive, so it wouldn't be. Um, or if you have something under hydrostatic pressure compressive, both sigma A and sigma B will be negative. But if you have kind of normal loading scenarios, then yes. And there you go. And get MATLAB working or figure out how to do the VCL to get a MATLAB window working. Yes, true.